Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Prayer Problems Podcast, the place where we talk about real problems that people like you and me have when it comes to prayer. We want to grow in prayer. We want to grow in communion with our Heavenly Father. We want to learn how to pray prayers that work and are effective and not just a waste of our time or waste of breath, but a living and active prayer life. That's our goal here. Um, if this is your first time jumping onto the podcast or watching this on, via YouTube on the video, um, I would encourage you to jump back to episode one where we talk about what is prayer. It's a good foundational episode, but every episode stands on its own, so you can 100% continue to uh, listen or watch this video here and jump back at a different time. On this episode, our topic is, how can I pray for my family? How to pray for our families, okay? I'm going to open us up in prayer, and then we're going to jump right into this topic. Very important topic. God, we thank you for this time that we have together. Lord, help us to learn and grow. Help us to walk according to your word and your ways, and help us to learn how to care for our families and love our families through prayer. God, we just thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, um, I don't know about you, but I think one of the biggest areas of every person's prayer life is involved in some way with praying for their family, okay? Um if you're a human being on this planet, you have somebody in your life that you that you call family, that you're close to, even if it's a close friend. Um, you have people that you would consider family, and if you have family, then you have issues, okay? Let's be honest. Let's be real, okay? Just start putting all your issues in the comments, please. You know, no, no. Uh, but if you have a family and you have people close to you, Okay, then there are issues, there are things that are happening in other people's lives or in your relationship with each other. Um, there are things that are happening that you wish would change. There are things that are happening that you don't like. There are things that are happening that are causing you grief, that are frustrating you, that are giving you sleepless nights. Um, if you've got family, then you've got issues, okay? It's just the reality of life because people are people, they're messy, and we all have our own problems and um, if you're not having your own problem right now in your life, you're going to have some kind of problem at some point. You're going to hope that somebody's praying for you, right? And so if you got a family, then you want to pray for your family. You're hoping that through prayer, things will change, that that you can pray for your family and it'll improve situations. Uh, but Sometimes we pray and nothing happens or things just seem to get worse or we just don't know what to pray or how to pray well for our families. The first thing I want to say is should we pray for our families? Yeah, of course. Praying for your family and your family members, your kids, your parents, your spouse, your, your relatives, the people that are close to you, praying for them is a way that you love them. You know, if you say to somebody, I love you, I care about you so much, then you should be lifting them up in prayer. It is one of the most powerful ways to love someone because you're taking the time to pray on their behalf to the God of the universe, asking the Lord to help them, to strengthen them, encourage them. It is one of the most loving things that you can do. And parents, I know you love your kids. I love my kids. I got three little ones and um, they're four, two, and four months. And I love my kids. I love my girls. And just about every morning, and I'd be lying if I said it was every morning, I'd never miss. Oh. But just about every morning, I lift them up in prayer. Even if, it's a, even if it's just a short, quick prayer, Lord, fill them with your love today. Help them to know you, God, at a young age. Uh, fill them with your joy and your love. And there's some specific things I pray for each. But I love my kids. And I know you love your kids, we should be praying for our children. We should be praying that God would help them. You know, sometimes I don't think we pray, and I'm just talking to the parents right now, grandparents right now. Um, I, I think sometimes we don't pray because we think we got this. We put a little bit too much trust in our own abilities to fix situations, to change situations, and we don't turn to the Lord to put our trust in Him. You know, thinking about your kids, 
if they have some kind of um, behavioral issue, um, some kind of action that they're doing that isn't right, how, how, how quick are we to try to muscle our way through the situation, wrestle the, the, the kid into submission almost, you know, maybe literally? <laughs> um, how quick are we to turn to our own devices or power tools or um, ways of communication or yelling or, or threats or grounding? How quick are we to turn to those things? And I'm not saying discipline is not important, but how quick are we to turn to those things versus turning to the Lord in prayer? in asking the Lord to help and to work and to transform. And I guarantee you that when you begin to pray for your kids in that situation, even the hardest situations, that it begins to change your own heart towards them, that you meet them with love and grace and not with law, not with um, harshness and anger, okay? You get, you follow me? Okay, so parents, done. All right, we got it covered. Okay, so should we pray for our family 100%? Yes, okay. It is one of the ways that we love our family members well is that we pray for them. But how do we pray for them? Now, this is a concept that I want you, I hope you can understand. Um, I hope that I communicate it clearly enough. This is something that um, I've seen and I've done, okay? One of the reasons why our prayers for our families are not effective is because we're using prayer as a method of control, okay, and not as a way of life and heart change. And let me explain what I mean by that. Your, um, let's, let's stay off the kids for a moment. Let's say your cousin, okay, is just like blowing up your family right now. Okay, for example, your cousin is blowing up your family. And when I say blowing up your family, I'm sure most people that are listening, they, they're, your mind is going to some situation that is happening or has happened. You know what I'm talking about when someone in your family is blowing things up, okay, and their actions are wrong. The things that they're doing is wrong. They're hanging with the wrong crowds. They're doing the wrong things. They're, um, maybe they're lying, stealing, cheating, um, whatever the case is, blowing up the family. We don't like it. Who would, right? Like, we don't like it. We're upset. We are frustrated. It'd be so much easier if this problem just went away, if this was just changed overnight. And so we reach out to God in prayer, and what begins to happen um, sometimes, and I'm not saying everybody does this, but this could be a reason why your prayers aren't effective. Sometimes we reach out to God, and our prayers are more like control, trying to control the person's actions versus actually praying that God would touch their hearts, okay? They're doing something wrong. You pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, stop them from doing this, doing this thing wrong. Do you know that God, like, allows us to do wrong? Like, we you know we have free will, and he's not going to force somebody to do something they don't want to do? And so why do we think when we come to prayer that we can just control people's actions? Now, back to the parents. You know, how often in prayer do we want to pray to control our children's actions, okay? Like, man, in Jesus' name, I pray that you'd arrest my child's hands that they would never hit again in Jesus' name. Like, you'd stop them, you know? That they would, that you'd, they'd stop hitting. They'd stop yelling in Jesus' name. That's control, and, and we're talking about obvious bad things. Sometimes it even gets out into things that we just don't like or disagree with. We're trying to transform and shape our kids in our own image or the way they, we think. It's control. We reach to prayer to control situations and people versus praying for their good. Okay? And so now I want you to see this shift. Praying for our families is not about controlling their actions but more about resourcing them that God would help them to make the right decisions, that God would change their hearts, that instead of focusing on what they're doing, we focus on who they're becoming, that God would resource them in the, in, in the depths of their soul to become the kind of person that we know that God is calling them to be, not by, not by ordering God or, or trying to order them through prayer to change their actions, but that God would soften their heart and touch their heart. I want to read this prayer um, from Paul, he's praying for the church um, 
in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. I'm just going to read through this. I want you to listen to the way that Paul prays, and then we're going to ask ourselves, how doesn't he pray, okay? For this reason also, since the day we heard this, we haven't stopped praying for you. So he's praying for these people, this, this church. We are asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, okay? Okay. Notice this. He says, God, I'm asking, Lord, I'm asking that for this church, for these people, that you'd fill them, fill them with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And now notice this. He says, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. So there's a cause and effect. He doesn't pray that they would walk fully pleasing to the Lord, that that they would do the right actions. He doesn't pray that. Notice that that is just the effect, what's the cause, that God would resource them, that he would fill them with knowledge of his will so that they would be so filled with knowing what is right that their actions would flow from that. In the book of Philippians chapter 1, there's a similar prayer where Paul prays that 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 our love would abound more and more in all knowledge and discernment so that we would approve what's excellent. Okay, and then be blameless on the day of Christ. So he's saying, it's not, Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name that they do the right thing, do the right thing, do this, do this, do this. No, pray that their heart would be changed, that it would be filled with God's love, that they would be filled with wisdom. And if you're concerned that your kid your spouse, your cousin, your uncle, your mom, your dad, maybe making the wrong decisions, doing the wrong actions, pray that God fills them with wisdom, fills them with the knowledge of his will, fills them with, fills them with the love of God, that their heart will be so full of God's love and God's wisdom that their, their actions and their attitudes and their decisions would be shaped by God's heart. You understand the difference? You see the difference there? Um, So Paul's praying that people will be resourced, not to control their actions, but to, to fill them, to set them up for success. And this is the big idea, especially when it comes to family, because I think this is a a temptation, a true temptation that we pray to try to control people. This is the big idea. We need to pray less about controlling actions and pray more about changing hearts, okay? Pray less about controlling actions and pray more about changing hearts. Praying for family members to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit, to walk by the Spirit right? Filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Praying that the Lord would soften their hearts. Praying that if somebody's in sin, somebody's far from God, praying that, not that, stop it, stop it, stop them, don't let them do it. Pray, Holy Spirit, convict their hearts so strongly that it stops them in their tracks. See the difference that there's a a heart change, a heart level situation. Fill them with your spirit, Lord, today, with your grace and your kindness and your love, Lord, that they'd see you and know you and that they'd treat everybody else with that kind of love as well. There's a difference between just focusing on an action and focusing on the heart. And what God wants to do in people's lives is not control their actions, but to change their hearts. In the Sermon on the Mount, it's a really interesting thing to, to read through Jesus' teaching, and he's looking at the law and comparing and contrasting the way that the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders interpret it, and the people interpret it, and the way that um, God really cares about, you know, and he, he goes from just the external actions to saying, no, the issue is really about your heart, and what at the end of the day, what needs to happen is a heart change, a deeper kind of transformation, not just a behavior modification or or trying to minute, manage the, the issues and the actions, but to be transformed into the image of Christ from the inside out. And imagine if your prayers were shaped in this way, that, that you'd be praying for people's hearts, your family's hearts to be changed. And again, this is, this is for more than just praying for our families, but, you know, our family, sometimes it becomes a... Um, becomes a, a very intense sticking point in our faith sometimes, and we we want it to change so bad, and I think we can result to control. You know, what if we also prayed, God, help me to be a better influence? You know, 
as parents and as a parent myself, it is tempting to prayer blame <laughs> almost like like you're just praying and praying and praying to to try to change your kid when if I had more patience, they wouldn't be pushed to that point where they do that thing. You know, so sometimes praying and asking God, help me to be a better influence. Fill me with love for my kids. Fill me with love for my family that I would that I'd approach every situation with grace and kindness and love. You know, that that would change the game as well. One last thought, okay? So we should pray for our families. It's a way that we love them. We need to understand that um, we're really called to resource our family through prayer. We need to resource them that God would touch their hearts and pray less about controlling actions, more about changing hearts. And this last thing that I just want to share very quickly is that we need to also learn to trust God and allow his will to be done. Back to control you know, we think we know what's best, and so through prayer, sometimes we try to impress our ideal or our idea of what it should look like onto our kids through prayer. Um, but the reality is God has a plan, and God's will needs to be done. Jesus, the Garden of the Gethsemane, says, not my will, but your will be done. In the Lord's Prayer, he teaches us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. And so, there are going to be seasons in the lives of your family members that you're not going to understand. And the thing that you need is patient trust. You wish that it would go away quickly, that it would resolve quickly, but it might be a season that God is doing something else. Maybe he needs to harden their hearts. You know, you're praying, soften their heart, soften their heart. But maybe God needs to harden their hearts to get them into the right place to then be transformed from the inside out forever. You know, have you ever seen a person just kind of skate by like like they're kind of middle of the road and they're they're living and managing their sin or their issue and it's it's not destroying everything but you know it's there but they're not far enough for it to become a big enough problem that it actually gets dealt with. Well, sometimes God may harden our hearts, may put us through a season uh, and, and expose a situation. And, and it's like, man, I wish that wasn't happening. But God has a plan. And so we need to understand that God is working. More than we realize, more than we're praying, more than we're hoping, God is working in your family more than you are. And so you got to understand that God has a plan. He's working, and sometimes you won't understand it. Sometimes he will let you in on it if you listen. If you take the time to ask versus barging in um, and just trying to to um, do what you think is best, but God has a plan, and so we also need to learn to trust Him with our family members, the people closest to us, and understand that there are times where there are seasons that God is doing something different, and it may be painful in the moment, but it's going to bring fruit. Okay, no discipline. Feels good in the moment, the Bible says, but a legitimate child of God is going to be disciplined. And so there may be seasons of discipline, seasons of, of challenges, seasons of difficulties, and, and God, why don't you just fix this? And, and the reality is it may need to run its course because God has something greater in store, deeper in store. And the goal is not just a behavior to change. The goal is for a heart to change. And so if... In our prayers for our families, we can focus on that, trusting in the Lord and changing from controlling actions, trying to control actions through prayer, to changing hearts, resourcing and, and praying to be that they be filled with love. Like That would do a lot more good, I guarantee you, than just praying to try to change an action. Okay? God is looking to change hearts. Okay. And then the actions will follow suit. Amen. Well, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope this gave you some practical ideas or some things to think about. But again, look in the New Testament, look at the different prayers. You're not going to see prayers from Paul or other authors where they are um, where they are controlling people's actions. It's all about fill them, God, open their eyes, convict them, 
change their heart so that they'd be pure and blameless, so that their actions would change. And if we begin to pray like that, instead of change their actions, change their actions, pray that God would fill them with their with your love, fill them with your spirit, the actions will follow suit. And um, yeah, pray for your families, lift them up in prayer daily. It is a, a good thing, a helpful thing. Trust in the Lord, believe that he is working more than you realize. And uh, your family's going to be all right, all right? Amen. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on the Prayer Problems Podcast. This has been a blast. I, I appreciate every each and every person who listens. Put a comment in this and something that you learned. Uh, share this with somebody. And uh, stay tuned. The last Friday of every month, we put out a brand new episode. And um, if you have any prayer problems, any questions about prayer, if you also send them in to us, I don't know, some way, somehow, on our website, victoryaog.org, um, I'll do my best to try to answer those in an episode as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the Prayer Problems Podcast. If you want more information about prayer, go to victoryaog.org prayer. Thank you for joining us and we will see you next time. God bless you.